we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed eight and a half years ago I was condemned to die a slow agonizing death of cancer a bain fish, I watch any fermuno, what can I say? Mew and Nam Yaria, a betome so. The best medical brains of the country confirmed the sentence. Three or four, what bain per ye is his assembly. I was at a dead end street. The ultimate gaped at me. I was young and I didn't want to die. Not me drew a wound quanta, Nanya, a hoopa, and a atome. In my desperation, I phoned my doctor and cried out to him the despair in my heart. Rather impatiently, he upbraided me. What's the matter, Oga? Haven't you any fight in you? Sure, you would die if you keep on crying. Now, my dream is a bit to me. I was a super man, so I did a before. I'm a man, I said, Oga, when you are going to be a woman, so of course, you say, yeah, you be. Yes, the West has overtaken you. Okay, face the facts. I'm part near a day and I do it. Now, so get to Quit worrying and do something about it. Right then and there, I took an oath, an oath so solemn that the nails sank deep into my flesh and cold chills ran down my spine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to cry. And if there is anything to mind over matter, I am going to win. I'm going to live. The usual amount of estuary in such advanced cases was administered to me for 40 days. And although my bones stuck out of my emaciated body, and although my feet were like lead, I did not worry. Now my phone, I have my Not once did I cry. I smiled, yes, I forced to smile. I'm not so idiotic. As to imagine that merely smiling can cure cancer. But I do. Yes, I do believe that a cheerful mental attitude helps the body fight disease. a cheerful mental attitude helps the body fight disease. I do believe that a cheerful mental attitude helps the body fight disease. I have never been healthier than in the last few years, thanks to those challenging fighting words. Face the facts. Quit worrying. Then do something about it. And we said that I added the Lord is with you. Because the Lord is with you. Because the Lord is with you. We have said that life is full of challenges. And it is because of these challenges that brings victories. God is with us. So let us rise to face the facts. And then let's quit worrying. Now talk on do something about your situation. 
And they say, obey your bribe. Do something about it. Do something about your situation. You need to rise to fake the facts. You have to stop worrying. And do something about your situation. And do it now. Do it today. Do something about your situation. Do it now. And do it today. See, as a manager of this earth, you need to have mastery over yourself. Then you can have mastery over your circumstances. This will power comes from the conviction that God is with us. Have confidence in the Lord who is and who is with you. Have confidence in the Lord who is and who is with you. God will keep us in perfect peace. If our mind is stayed on him, if our minds are steadfast on him, he will keep us in perfect peace. Jesus told the disciples, have faith in God. Matthew 6, from 26. Matthew 6 from verse 26 to 30. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bands. Yet your heavenly father, your heavenly father feeds them so your father has enough to feed birds are you not much more valuable than they can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life and why do you worry about clothes See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these, these flowers. <laughs> If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? You of little faith. So he's just trying to say, have faith in me. Now what Jesus is not saying here is not to work. Not to defer anything or everything to him. But he seeks to build the disciples' confidence in him. That he has the ability to meet their needs. Having ability to meet our needs does not mean that we defer everything to him. That does not mean that. We should go and sleep and fold our arms and hope that he will come and feed us. Do something about your situation. And do it now. And do it now. In any case, what do we mostly worry about? What do we mostly worry about? Verse 31 to 34. Same chapter, please. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Do not worry, saying. Worrying itself is a problem. 
But when you worry and you keep talking, you add to your challenges. Because your words will always trap you. We are all snared by what we say. So he says, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? See, the tongue is a kind of a master over the body. And the others pay attention to what now, their tongue will say. Once the tongue is speaking, and saying that what shall we eat? What shall we wear? You see, it, the whole body begins to be depressed. Because the master is saying that there's no food. There's no food. If you like wake up in the morning and start saying, if it looks like I'm 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 sick. I said they may ya no. By evening, all of them, the other past who say that master says we are sick. I didn't say no nani pedu akwa ni na so don't worry say don't worry say be careful what you think we spoke about good thinking you should also be careful what you say because you can always have what you say so when you combine two negative things thinking wrongly and speaking evil you disturb your body you disturb your life you disturb your soul you will be closing the door of a brighter future so don't worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these what is the word there things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these worth things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow we'll worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So what do we mostly worry about? The answer is things. Things. We mostly worry about things. Things are material objects without life. Or consciousness. An animate object. So do not allow things to destroy your body. Don't allow things to terminate life. You are more precious and superior to them. After all, we will leave these things behind. We will leave these things behind. Now I'm yet to see someone who has cars and the person died and they buried that fellow and the vehicles. I'm here to see. If they attempt that, <laughs> some other people too will not sleep the whole night. Who's so be a wa or dear Fidia, your friend a kai, uh, on what terms say young Fensiano? So a bomb or dear Castle Bayasa, he'll be no so be sleep. I wonder. Yeah, they will not sleep. One na cry. So go and watch the body at the summit. A bomb or dear so be young. Say Fidia, any. And and then, when, when they get to the grave, and then they work very hard and they get to the car. They will take the course as a foolish man. They <laughs> will just throw it somewhere. And they then take the car away. No, mm -hmm. now, we will leave these things behind. They do not have eternal value. 
They don't have eternal value. That is why those of us who are born again, we need to be content with what we have. Don't let us worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we wear? No, don't let us worry saying. So because these things do not have eternal value, do something about your situation before it does something to you and do it today. Now do something about your situation before it does something to you and do it today. People have collapsed under the burden of accumulated yesterday. Accumulated yesterday's challenges. And fearful tomorrows. The burden of accumulated yesterday's and fearful tomorrows. See, Brothers, but yet a majority of them would have avoided that if they had paid heed, paid attention to the words of Jesus. Let's go back to verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Why he saying that don't let us go into worrying about tomorrow is this. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So when you wake up in the morning, the day itself has enough trouble of its own. So don't go and add tomorrow's trouble that has not really arrived. Don't pick that one. And then yesterday struggled that you couldn't do anything about it. When you put this load and carry them upon today's problem, even the strongest person will falter. And therefore, so do something about your situation. And do it today. Concentrate on today's troubles. See, today is our most precious possession. It is our only sure possession. The Bible says in Psalm 118 verse 24. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Now he has made it for us. And given it to us. Let us rejoice and be glad in the day. It is our most precious possession. See, when you wake up in the morning and you see the sun rising. And you hear the sound of birds. Bless the Lord. He has given us another gift of the day. There is none of us that can make a day. But he makes the day for us to better our lords. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is our only sure possession. In the Lord's prayer, Jesus said, give us this day. Our daily bread. You see, the only bread that you can possibly eat is today's bread. Yesterday's one will be molded, and tomorrow's one is not yet baked. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, as long as it is today. We must do the works of him who sent us. The night is coming when no one can work. The day called today 
is God's precious gift to us. That is why today is God present. Present. The only period you can call present is not yesterday, it's past. It's not tomorrow, it's not yet arrived. In fact, in this life, there is nothing like tomorrow. Tomorrow exists just by name. Once the tomorrow arrives, it moves again to another tomorrow. You will never meet it until you die. You will never meet tomorrow. I want to bet you. If you want to chase tomorrow, you will never meet tomorrow tomorrow till eternity. It doesn't exist. It is only by name. What is real? is today. And that is a present. It is a gift. Now, what does it mean to present something? To have a present? To furnish. Or endow. To furnish. Or endow with a gift. To bring, to offer. To offer. So today is a gift that God has offered to us to afford. So today is a gift that God has afforded us. He has afforded us to straighten the crooked and to finish the unfinished business. He has afforded us to build on our skills. So we don't lose out of the competition. Once you have this gift called today, shut out the past. The dead yesterday shut off the future the unborn tomorrow then you are safe for the day now once you are right God presents you the day close the door to yesterday it is a dead past and then shut the unborn future. And then live in the daytight compartment. Live in the daytight compartment. Concentrate your energy. Your strength. And all your ability on doing today's work superbly today. That is the best way to prepare against the future. Do today's work superbly today. And you'll be preparing effectively against tomorrow. The future is what we do today. Who you are today is what you did yesterday. You are a product of your yesterday. Work very hard today. Now, there was this lady who was in the law school. And then the mother told me how she was studying and studying and studying. Uh, recently I met her because it's been a long time so she came home. Now she's a lawyer. And then I was asking about how she made it. And then she told me how those days she would leave home for about three weeks. Her phone is off. She goes out to a solitary place, to maybe one of their homes somewhere, lock herself up, tell parents, siblings that I'm out of coverage area. And then she said, So she will be there with God and books. Why, why, why did you do that? And she said that she had to write the, the exams to the law school. She had to write it twice. So she told herself that once she has entered the law school proper, the 10 papers that they write, she wasn't going to fail any one of them. She was going to take all the 10 like that. And so she decided to study. And she studied. 
na sukupon na wakwa kwa shen mono na ensoche bebre owa opese oye na no wa sina juni pise on ninkuku ba kukura ewum na she said that at the end of the day there were about 700 69 of them scored all the 10 she was one of them na wo wie ensoche ni nyina wie no wo edi nkunim no na okan wo 